Welcome to the Teacher's Pep Rally. If you missed our last episode with John Moran, who talks about gamification, please go back and check it out. Our guest today is like Steve Martin on SNL. She's a frequent (laughs) visitor and a friend. She's the founder and CEO of Chasing Happiness. She loves to remind us to live life to the fullest. Please welcome to the Teacher's Pep Rally, our happiness guru, Crystal Steers. Uh, (laughs) You guys are awesome. Oh, I had a smile on my face all day knowing that we were going to be talking to you. Oh, you have gone through quite the journey. So let's just go ahead and open up that can of worms and talk about it. Um, can you share with us your recent journey moving basically from one place to another? Yeah. So I am coming from Southern Ontario. So for those who don't know exactly what that is, Niagara Falls, Toronto, those sorts of places. I am now in Halifax, Nova Scotia, which is a different time zone as we were all just talking about. (laughs) Um, I am so far East. I have entered a different time zone, a time zone that does not exist in the United States. Um, (laughs) So yeah, it's been, it's been an interesting journey and we drove. So I made this move with my mother And we drove from Southern Ontario to Halifax, which was a five-day journey. Five days? days. Yes. So here's the thing people don't understand about Canada. It's a big country. And so it takes a long time to drive out of certain places because our provinces are giant. Mm. I'd say so. Yes. And I'm thinking, teacher friends, you know, take a moment in the classroom, pull down that old uh, map that you've got <laughs> hanging up there you haven't looked at in a while. Let's look up Canada and, and follow where our friend Crystal went and, and where she is now. I think that that would be a... I love that. So did you did you have to actually drive around Maine or did you get we to cut across Maine? Be- no. So here's the thing. You can cut across Maine, but because of COVID, the borders were still closed at that point. They've just opened within the last week, right? So we actually had to drive up out of Southern Ontario into sort of where you get into Northern Ontario up by Ottawa and then into Quebec and then through Quebec and North all the way up the edge of Quebec and Maine and around into New Brunswick. That's part of the reason why it took so long because we couldn't cut across the United States because you guys wouldn't let us in. <laughs> All right. So, and if er- everybody that's listening, yeah, yeah. We had, everybody that's listening to this picture in your mind, if you're in the United States, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and Vermont, that's what you, well, and once maybe more about Massachusetts and Vermont, that's what you just, you have to drive around those two States to get yes. to where you are, which yeah. is crazy. It's not like so I went, I went town. north and east and further north and then further east. Yes, it was it was quite the journey. Oh, wow. wow. Five hours. So five days. Do, do you, uh, Pete and Fred yeah. and Letitia, as teachers, do you ever have that experience with a kid who sees you outside of the school and they have like this crazy freakish um, yes. reaction? Food store. <laughs> yeah. What are, you, what are you doing here? Yeah, we don't. We're not supposed to leave the building, food. right? We, we we live there. That's that's, that's right. our home. Well, Crystal, just because students think that teachers do move, and especially after COVID and things, we're seeing a lot of people make these kinds of changes. So, sure. before we get really into the nitty gritty of stuff, I wanted to ask if you had any tips for anyone thinking about making this kind of change since you just went through it. Yeah. So realistically, if you're looking to make big changes in life, there's a few things you need to do. And I sort of made a little list because you know me and I love lists. We so love I have sticky lists. notes. <laughs> I have sticky notes all over around here because I made you some lists today. Um, so the, f- <laughs> the first suggestion, the first piece of advice is make all the plans you want. Some people are planners and that's okay. If you need to spend three weeks researching a plan, go ahead and do it. But ultimately you need to be okay when things fall apart. It's going to happen. Something is not going to go according to plan. And I promise you that does not negate the whole experience. It just means one thing has fallen off track. You can get everything back in the plan and in line with the plan if you're a planner but you need to be okay when things don't go exactly according to plan. You also need to know the risks. Making a move, especially like the move I just did, requires a lot of risk. I have come to a place I've never actually been before in my entire life. I had no idea what the weather was like. I had no idea what the people were like. I 
made this choice because I was ready for that change. And if you're someone who can't handle change, then know the risks of that. Know how you need to prepare to emotionally handle whatever you're going to be going through. And it's okay if you have a backup plan. It's 100% okay to have a backup plan. If you think, I may not be okay with this, that's fine. What are you going to do when it turns out not to be okay? Don't walk into it assuming that's going to be the case. But if you feel better and you can feel more secure by having that backup plan, go ahead and do it. There's nothing wrong with that. Know that you can handle anything. We as human beings have gotten away from this mindset of we can handle it. We can take on whatever comes our way because we now live in this society where things are so easy. We don't have to worry Mm -hmm. about, you know, shelter. We don't necessarily have to worry too much about food in most places. We like easy and we've forgotten that we're capable of hard things. Mm -hmm. Most of all, Trust that you as an individual know what's best for you. If you want to make a big change in your life and everyone around you thinks you're crazy, don't get me wrong. My family absolutely thinks I'm crazy. That's okay. (laughs) It's a hundred percent. Okay. You have to trust in your own instincts and your own ability to be able to move forward. Those are the most important things when you're talking, whether it's a big change, like a move or a career change. Maybe you're a teacher and you want to get out of teaching. Maybe you're someone who is doing something else, but you want to get into teaching. Big changes like that come with risk. They come with a lot of challenges, but they can be really rewarding too. I'm also thinking about students. I mean, I had, I saw some, someone posted something on Twitter today saying, um, what would be a great exit question for a middle schooler who's leaving mid-year? So that list you just gave oh. would be great to share with a kid who's moving because they don't necessarily get a, a choice or a word maybe yeah. in that decision. So I think that that's a great list for our kids too. A hundred percent. And if you have students or kids in your life who are facing big changes, it can be really emotional for them because nine times out of 10, they don't get a say, right? These are, these are kids whose parents are saying, This is how life has to change and you're going to have to adapt. And that can be scary. So giving them the space to feel however they feel, but also being able to teach them, we're going to face this together. You are not alone. Anything that comes up, you can handle it because you have support systems in place. And of course, there are kids in some places that don't have those. So if you as an educator or someone in that child's life can be that for them, bonus, because they're going to need it. I see Letitia kind of just smiling. I love Crystal. (laughs) (laughs) I love you right back. This is such good stuff. It is. And so I'm also sitting here thinking about, you know, I don't know how you guys feel about the word home, but the definition of home, what that means to you. Is it a physical place? Is it a feeling? Is it what you make of it? Crystal, how would you define home? Because you basically just moved from one home to another. I did. And this is not the first time I've done this. Um, For people who are listening and don't know me, five years ago, I did this. I moved from Southern Ontario to Edmonton, which is in the opposite direction in Canada, um, is a little bit further away, actually. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So I, 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 I like change, personally. I embrace change. But part of the reason I can do that is because for me, home isn't a specific place on a map. It's a feeling. It's a feeling I have within myself. It's a feeling I create with my chosen family. It's a feeling I create with the people who I allow into my life. Home is not a physical pin on a map. I can buy furniture anywhere. I can sleep anywhere. I've slept on airport bathroom floors. Like that does not matter to me. What matters is the feeling I get in a place, the energy I draw from the environment that I'm in. And my feeling of safety and security, that's what home is for me. I like that. I, I, you know what, I'm trying to just think, were were we just discussing this this past weekend? Somebody had talked about the definition of home and, and, and it was very similar to what you just phrased it, framed it up as. Um, But it's funny how we get attached to that space though, too, you know, and we consider it home, but I think you're right. It's home is, uh, you know, it's not just where our stuff is. It's where we are, you know, wherever we are. So that's a good way to look at it. 
it's a hard thing to look at though, isn't it? I mean, it's not easy to just say, well, I think I'm just going to go ahead and move over there now. Um, and especially, you know, when you plant roots, so I give you credit for that. You remind me of the military families that I've known over the years and how, you know, every, from a Marine Corps perspective, you have to move every three years. Sure. And with that, I got to know my friends who had children who had to move within the schools and they, uh, as, as I got to know them, as they got older, they were very, um, for the most part, very well-adjusted people because they got to learn how to communicate with different people and, and, and kind of how to learn to acclimate and make friends. And That was me, Fred. I was a Navy, I was a Navy rat. So I kind of right. get, get that a little bit. Um, the other thing I was going to ask, I want to see each of you, how, what makes something feel like home to you, whether it's in your classroom, at your actual house, like, what is it that you do that you can think of one thing that makes you feel like something is home or homey? <laughs> Cutting the grass. <laughs> just never okay. stops. <laughs> that, that does, that me. feels like home. Okay. How about you, Letitia? <laughs> Cutting the grass. <laughs> you too? I love it. No, not me, buddy. Oh, no. I don't. That's that homie for me. I would like it cut, but I won't. I won't. I won't do it. Um, you know, I love. I, I think for me, peace is the big. My big um, what grounds me and what anchors me. Uh, just peace. And I think that comes from me, you know, from us, right? It's kind of what Crystal said. It's really where we are, the energy, all of that. I, I was recently watching Princess Die, that whole docuseries on CNN, which is fascinating. I'm obsessed with, with the royals. But, you know, you see this beautiful castle. I mean, just with acres and acres and acres. And the thought of her, and of course, my mouth is a gape, right? Because that's like, now that's a pad, you know, like that's a house, right? And just the thought of her being so lonely and sad in there, you know, with all of that space, all that, all those beautiful pieces of furniture and history, and for her to be so lonely. So I think home starts with us. And for mm -hmm. me, it's peace, just really cultivating peace wherever I go. Yeah. And I feel like you can find that whether you're in a actual physical space or outside right how about you pete yeah um so i grew up the ocean atlantic ocean was my backyard wow. i saw the ocean every single day until i moved away in my adulthood so whenever i would drive around new jersey new york or whatever i i never felt lost because i always knew the ocean was to the east of me and that was my comfort zone that was my place um, moving to the Atlanta area, we're quite landlocked and <laughs> it's taken a long mm. time for me to be able to finally call this place home. Um, I would judge it by how comfortable I am driving around knowing I could wander and not get lost. And it, it took a long time to get there. The urban sprawl here is enormous. It is mm -hmm. just, it just goes on and on and on. It took a long time for me to get comfortable. And I realized the comfort came from as I'm driving, oh, there's that place that I went with my family. There's that place I took the chorus and we performed. There's the place we did a class trip. And it, it goes back to the people. It takes time for me to mm. take root in a place and grow those experiences with people. And then, then it will become home for me. It's not a physical thing. It's the connections with people for me. That's nice. How about you, Crystal? Mm -hmm. So for me, a lot of it is just the feeling in the moment. Like you guys, you guys are home, right? One of my many things that is home, you guys are one of those things. I've been looking forward to chatting with you guys for more than a week because that's the feeling, right? Mm. And so for me, it's something that I can create by the people that I surround myself with, the places that I choose to go. Most of us are fans of Disney. Like when, when I get off the plane in Orlando, there's something about hitting the airport that just feels like home. And that has nothing to do with the fact that, you know, it's Florida. It has to do with, I know the feeling that comes along with going to Disney. I know the people I'm going to interact with, even if I've never met them personally before, I know the energy of that environment. Right. 
And I think for most people, everything we've talked about, and Aaron, you're going to tell us yours in a second. I think most people always bring it back to whatever the feeling is, whether it's safety, security, warmth, coziness, however you want to label it, there is something comforting about how you define home. And that's personal to each and every person. That's good. And I, you know, it made me think about the shirt that most people have probably seen. I don't think Disney originally did it, but now they have them. Now they're selling it. I think it was an outside artist that did it with the silhouette of the castle. Um, I don't know if it's from Disney World or, or Disneyland and it says home on it. And it I, did. It's done very well because us huge Disney fans, you know, um, can relate to what you just said, Chris. When you get there, there's just a comfort. There's a, a sense of belonging or excitement or whatever it is that it does. It feels like another home. It feels like another home. Fred, were you going to say something? I just, I got, I bought it. You bought, I bought the, the shirt. T-shirt. Yeah, Castle. That, was my, that, was my wife's, that was my wife's gift. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I really? love it. There you go. Um, so so mine, I'm sitting here thinking as I'm listening to all of you and I'm just nodding my head. Yes, yes, yes. Um, there's one thing that I can't, I've been sitting here trying to put my finger on what it is, but there's a, it's like a coziness factor. Um, if I can feel like I can find a space to kind of curl up and read a book or just be in my thoughts or, or have a nice visit with someone that to me is home. And then I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the smell of certain foods that remind me of home, whether that's something from my childhood or just something that I like to have, you know, whether it's hot chocolate or soup or something, but so I guess kind of smells and then whatever that sense is where you just kind of feel like you can just get all comfy somewhere. That's mine. Yeah. yeah when I said though, cutting grass, I mean, I was, I was being flippant, but at the same time, um, you know, I was just thinking about, I would cut the grass at my mom's house, which is the house that I grew up in. Um, I would cut the grass here at my home that I'm living in now. Um, but it's always been that um, my comfort zone is the puttering. I think that's the better. Mm-hmm. Way. I, I love to find myself busy around the yard and that that's, that's kind of like, I guess that's my version of cozy in a way. Um, I just, cause I, cause I'm at the computer so much mm-hmm. I'm in this tech space so much. I love to get dirty with my hands. I love this. You know, when my, when my smell was a little bit more sharper, I love the, <laughs> the smell of the dirt on, on me, like my hands and stuff like that. Um, that's a very calming uh, thing mm. for me. And that's what I think of when I think of home. So the smell of grass and the smell of um, landscaping and stuff like that. that now, I'm not I'm not offering to cut your grass, but I'm saying I like <laughs> to cut my grass. Darn, I, I thought that's what you were offering. But <laughs> right. I'm like, I'm willing to pay for a flight. <laughs> Put her away, buddy. Put her away. That could become a thing. (laughs) Right, right, right. I I love that. I don't know if you guys noticed there was kind of a pattern in um, what the thing that was common amongst all of us was there was some kind of, there was a comforting factor whenever we were thinking about what feels like home. So this kind of transitioned nicely into something that um, I'm looking forward to talk to Crystal about. And that's our educators are spread so thin. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of emphasis on social and emotional health, but I think because there's such a need and because there's not time to truly plan it out, um, we, we need a we need a little help. It seems like it's worse this year than it was even last year. So can you give our listeners some things, um, that we can start doing right now to, to help us find that balance and support our, our mental health and well-being? A hundred percent. And the very first one is going to be spend time with your feelings. People hate when I tell them that, but here's the reason that I'm telling you that y'all, especially as educators are stressed out. You need to acknowledge that you are stressed out. Otherwise you're just trudging through onto the next thing. You're not taking the time to stop, slow down and actually be in the feeling. And I get it. You know, you're busy. You got a lot going on between family and side hustles and, you know, everything else that you're dealing with. But it's really important to acknowledge where you are so that you don't end up in mental burnout. Because the more you just trudge through, the closer and the quicker you get to that mental burnout. And let's face it, the holidays is chaos for like 99% of the people you meet, right? Mm-hmm. 
and add that on top of already feeling like you're close to burnout and you will not survive emotionally through the holiday season. So spend time with your feelings, even if that only means, you know, five minutes at the end of the day, you sit down and you, you know, process, whether it's in a journal or whether it's just mentally for yourself, you sit down and you process, you know what, today I was really stressed out because this happened. Okay. If it happens again, how can I handle it differently so that I don't feel that way? Maybe for you, that's calling a friend at the end of the day. Or while you're driving to the grocery store and the kids are still at home so that you have someone to talk to about all of those things. It doesn't matter. Whatever works for you is totally okay, but find a way to actually sit and process and be in those feelings. Get creative. I am telling you, I cannot even begin to tell you the amount of research that is coming out right now in regards to how creativity is actually beneficial not just for our physical health, but for our mental health. Creativity is one of those things that most people think, especially the older we get, we think we're not really creative. I don't live in a creative space. You know, someone like Pete to me seems creative, not myself, right? And see, Pete's shaking his head. He's like, I'm not creative. This is what happens. We as adults- I agree with you. We think we're not creative people. Let me tell you, there's not a single person I have met on the face of this planet so far who is not creative in some way, whether that's you're creative in the kitchen, you're creative creating art, you're an actor, you're a creative coder, you're a creative author, whatever that happens to be, you can create anything, anything. It doesn't matter what it is. If that's painting, great. If it's drawing, great. If it means creating a garden, great. That's still creativity. Live in some creativity. It doesn't matter if you only have five minutes a week to do it. Spend five minutes a week doing it. It it makes such a huge difference. The very last thing is something I talk about regularly, and I will continue to talk about this until the day I die. You need to schedule what I call me time. We take our schedule so seriously. From this time to this time, I have school. From this time to this time, the kids have this appointment. I have this appointment I need to get to. But we do not seriously take ourselves as that important. We do not book in the hours in every day, every week to spend time with ourselves doing whatever we want. I challenge every listener of this podcast for the next week, schedule at least one hour, whether that's five minutes a day, whether it's 15 minutes a day, whatever works for you. One hour in the whole week that's just for you. Put your phone in a different room, shut off every device that you can, spend time with yourself. That is such a huge thing in order to rebalance yourself. If that means you go outside for a walk and you leave your phone at home, go ahead and do that. If it means you take your phone, but you put it on do not disturb, go ahead and do that. I'm not saying you can't have technology. What I'm saying is find something that works for you so that you can reset and refocus and regain some of the energy that you've slowly been depleting yourself of. That's a good, I mean, this stuff is, I mean, I can't with you, Crystal, but you know what, one of the, the thing that really encouraged me, Crystal was First of all, guys, I don't know about you or our listeners, but I thought we would have been in a different space (laughs) right now, right? And then Delta came and said, oh, no, not yet. So I I found myself kind of having to reboot, if you will. And so when I learned that you were taking this trip, I just thought it was amazing that, okay, I feel like she's rebooting. She's like, you know what? I've had enough of COVID. I'm out of here. You know, and it really encouraged me. And that's what I really want to encourage our listeners uh, tonight to do. Maybe we all need a reboot to kind of revisit some of these things. I love this idea of home, the simplicity of it, right? The, the reconnecting with what home is, just spending me time, sitting in feelings. These are going, it's going back to basics um, just so that we can thrive this next leg of the pandemic. So thank you for sharing. And I'll say, Crystal, even um, as you were traveling, Crystal sent me some pictures and you would have thought I was on the trip with her. (laughs) It was like, yes, this is beautiful. You know, so just encouraging each other when we're experiencing something, you know, shoot someone a text, uh, share your experience with someone, even if it's with a picture, 
just so that we can continue to uh, fill each other up and encourage each other. So thank you for your courage and rebooting us tonight. A hundred percent. Look, that that aspect of our lives is so unbelievably important because some people live in different comfort zones, right? Not everybody is comfortable enough, especially since we're still in a pandemic to move to a totally different place with people they've never met before. And like, it's a lot, right? So if you're not comfortable with that, but you miss traveling, but you're not comfortable leaving your house, you know, somebody who's traveled, go get pictures from them, have them message you every day. There are alternatives so that you can get the same feeling without putting yourself in a, in a situation where you feel at risk, but we all need the reboot. We all need to Mm -hmm. reset. We are no different. I have said this before and I will say it again. You are no different than your cell phone. Your cell phone needs to be shut off every once in a while. So do you. I've lived true to that since you told me that. Yes. Yes. I watch squirrels now. (laughs) I love it. That's a t-shirt. Uh, Fred, what did you want to say? No, I decided I, 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 I'm writing that down. I watch squirrels. Oh. I love it. I do. It's the wonder. Remember she told us about the wonder? Oh, yeah. I remember. It, it, it is. It is actually kind of fascinating to watch them. It's nuts, but I get it. Uh, You're I- also... No, you said something. I didn't. I didn't. I just, so she was talking about putting the phone down, and then you said something, but I, I wasn't tracking what you you meant. You said you you do practice that, uh, Aaron. Yeah. Well, she had talked about you know what do you do with your cell phone when the battery's running low? Oh, okay. Okay. You charge it, and so that was a perfect analogy for me to be like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. Why do I let myself run out <laughs> of complete steam? Right. 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 Right doesn't make any sense. In fact, I was texting my mom today because I could tell she's getting all ready for the Thanksgiving and running herself ragged. And I said, mom, you need to slow down, take it easy. Cause then by the time it's time to kind of have fun and be with family, you're just going to be too tired and it's not going to be worth it. And that's the thing. go Go ahead, Fred. No, please go ahead. That's the thing, right? If we get ourselves into a position where we are so unbelievably exhausted because we're trying to make it to that next experience. We don't enjoy that next experience. We miss out on the beauty of that because we're so exhausted. So why on earth do we keep living this way is my question to people. Yeah. And so this kind of makes a nice little segue. There are themes that we're talking about home, being comfy, um, you know, being with family, uh, finding ways to be creative, you know, Thanksgiving in America is coming up here, Crystal. And we always have our favorite Canadian come, uh, to remind us of ways to voice our gratitude because it's so important for us to do right for, to find happiness in life, I think, and for mental health. So do you have some ideas about ways that we can voice our gratitude? hundred percent. Of course I have, have (laughs) tons of ways. And first and foremost is just being grateful for where you are in the moment, which sounds silly, right? And we as adults are, are constantly critical of these sentences that we hear. But if you actually stop and think about it, you are grateful to wake up in the morning and take another breath, right? You are grateful to have another day, whether you acknowledge it or not, You are grateful to be able to go outside. You are grateful that there is food in your fridge. There is always something that you can stop and be grateful for. And I'm not saying like you have to be happy and positive all the time. But what I am saying is on the days when you struggle, when you find it hard to be grateful, find the little things. You know, I'm grateful right now that I have moved to Halifax because Halifax does not have any snow, but Southern Ontario does, <laughs> you know, little things like that can help you through those sort of more difficult days or the more difficult times. And here's the thing about gratitude. You can practice it any way you choose to. You can tell your neighbors you're grateful that they're there for you whenever you need them. You can tell your kids you're grateful. You could just be grateful in your own mind. You don't have to share it with anybody You can have any kind of practice you want. I have a gratitude journal, which I think we've talked about previously on my other episode. 
that's not something you have to do. If you want a gratitude jar, do a gratitude jar. If for you, it's writing on a whiteboard at the end of the day, you know, I'm grateful this happened today, or I'm grateful tomorrow is going to bring this. One thing is really all it takes to start the process. And it doesn't matter how you build on it, if you build on it, but constantly checking your attitude, your mindset about that is super important because don't get me wrong. I have a gratitude journal. I have a jar around here somewhere that I haven't unpacked (laughs) yet. I got whiteboards. I got sticky notes, but I still have days where I feel like, oh my God, what am I doing? Have I lost my mind? Like what is going on? We all have them and that's okay too. Be grateful that you're a human being with all of those feelings because it's totally okay for you to have them all. It doesn't matter how you start, but I can tell you a life of gratitude, and I'm not talking a lifetime of gratitude, but a life that has gratitude in it is going to change a whole bunch of things about you because we are now doing scientific studies around gratitude and how that not just changes our mindset, but actually physiologically changes our bodies. And there is science that shows not only does it lower your blood pressure, your heart rate, boost your immune system. It also helps for you to actually be more resilient in life. COVID came along. Not a single one of us thought we were ever going to deal with this kind of a thing. People who have gratitude practices through this are, are doing way better emotionally than people who haven't. Studies are showing that now. And there are mm-hmm. some great studies going on about how this particular moment in time for us as human beings is really going to determine how we move forward based on mindset. And gratitude is one of those really big pieces of mindset. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting here thinking about a couple things. So I'm going to talk about the first one that's coming to mind. Um, I love that you have a jar for gratitude. I think that that, because there's something about, right. I think writing it out and, and then physically putting it in a space where it's being held. Um, I usually at night, yeah. I, yeah, I think I share with you guys at night. Um, and this all started when I had a really, it was my first year where it was just beyond tough. Um, I found myself coming home and crying a lot, wondering how I was going to get through the next day. And then the next day you get up and you do it again. And I started at night before I went to sleep. I was like, it's not that bad, Aaron. It's not that bad. And so I would just start saying all the things that I was thankful for, for that day. And as I kept doing that, what it did was as I was going to sleep, I was like, yeah, see, it's not that bad. Think of all these things that you just listed that that you're thankful for. Um, And it really helped me get through the end of that year. And strangely enough, um, this is not to pat my back, but it's just to kind of talk to you out there if if you're having one of those years. Um, I ended up being picked as teacher of the year that year. And that was, you know, um, that was a struggle year f- for me. Um, so it just kind of shows you that that gratitude does help you be resilient. Like you said, Crystal, I can relate. And, and I think to that point, oh, I'm sorry, Fred, go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. I was going to say that, you know, when you begin to practice it more often, you will find that it becomes almost like remote. Mm-hmm. I mean, I remember, I mean, as crazy as this sounds, having, you know, healing from COVID, like in the midst of having the virus <laughs> and just being grateful, of course, not for the virus, right. But grateful that I had a, a clean bed, you know, to rest in while I recovered that I had all the medication that I had health care and Gatorade and water, you know, you start thinking about, you know, homeless people who are sick and they're dealing with this ill on the streets, you know, so I think that gratitude, the more we practice and it becomes a lifestyle, we find we'll find that it just begins to become part of our DNA almost and almost automatic. I like that. Yeah, I agree with that a lot. I think that's an important thing, how it becomes automatic and it just automatically kicks in and and it allows you to elevate yourself, I guess. Um, What I what I was actually getting ready to say, too, was uh, since we're on the edge of the holidays here was is one of my favorite songs from White Christmas. And it's uh, Bing Crosby's version of uh, Counting My Blessings. And, um, or counting your blessings, right? Or uh, is it counting? Yeah, you're counting your blessings. But it's such a great. If you ever li- if you ever read the lyrics, it's such a simple song, but it's such a pleasant song, and and it and it sums up everything we're just saying here. So that's one of the, it's something something you can listen to. You can kind of remind yourself of just through other songs too. I think there's other songs out there too that I think now that talk about gratitude through. 
counting your, you know, what's bestowed upon you and, and looking forward. It's a good practice. It's a very healthy. Mm -hmm. practice. Absolutely. And gratitude is this one thing that it doesn't matter what kind of a position you're in in life. You could be homeless and be still be grateful. You could be somebody who lives in a mansion and still find something to be grateful for. Every human being on the face of the planet is capable of gratitude. And it creates this wonderful thing. And I'm not saying bad things don't happen. And a hundred percent, like you can acknowledge that and you can, you can feel that. But the difference with gratitude is your brain reminds you that even in the bad, there is still good in my life. My whole life is not horrible. My whole life is not wrong. My whole life has not, you know, imploded in some way. You constantly need that reminder as a human being, because sometimes we get so deep in the dirt that we can't see the other side. So with gratitude, you feel less isolated because you remind yourself that, oh, I do have friends. I do have people who text me randomly just to reach out. You feel less isolated, which is huge during COVID, mm -hmm. right? Huge during the holiday season, because so many people feel alone during the holiday season. Gratitude is this amazing thing that doesn't really cost us anything but totally has a bearing on every aspect of our lives because our brains are hardwired to actually give us a good experience. It's why people forget bad things that happen in their lives. Your brain is hardwired to kind of get rid of some of that because you as a species need to keep moving forward. You need to want to live, right? Mm -hmm. You need to want to fight forward. So your brain has a process to get rid of some of that stuff. But we, because of the society we live in, are constantly focused on negative. If you can do one minute a day of gratefulness and gratitude, you will change your whole mindset and also stop watching the news. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'd, like to, I'd like to mention the value of this type of practice in young people mm -hmm. starting early on. So uh, the week before Thanksgiving in, in my classroom, I'd stop my lessons a couple minutes early and I would say to the kids, okay, everybody's getting a three today. You did great. You want a three plus? Here's the challenge. And I sit at the xylophone and I'm just playing something steady and I invite them. I say, close your eyes. And when you have something in your mind that you're thankful for, I want you to open your eyes. And if you feel like sharing it with the class, I want you to raise your hand. And if you feel like getting up next to me and singing it, come on up next to me and sing, and you'll get a three plus, which is the best grade I can get. And two years ago, because it didn't happen last year, um, it would be, I'm thankful for my latest video game console. I'm thankful for more, more material things and silly things and um, superficial things. Maybe not from a kid's point of view, but from what I'm trying to get out of them, you know? Right. And then, <laughs> and then this year, I'm thankful for uh, just the most sweet things. I'm thankful for my school. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for God. I'm thankful for um, a, a lot of pets. A lot of kids have gotten pets in the last, <laughs> since the last time I've done sure. this. Yay! Uh, yeah. Uh, and it's just so great. And, and I'm grateful to hear their singing voices again, because that that's really been absent in my life. Um, you know, we're spread out. They're up far away with me. I have the door open and all. And I don't even give them a note. I don't give them any guidance at all. I want it to come from them in the most raw form. I just play a little something to keep us together. Um, but any any teachers listening out there, you don't have to be a music teacher. Just do that. It, it's such a cool uh, activity. And it really sparked a lot of conversation. I just threw away the lesson book after that. And then we just had a nice talk. It was just mm -hmm. cool. Pete, I love that. Yeah. And I love that you've just touched on, it does not matter how old they are. Right. Everyone can be grateful. You can ask a two-year-old who barely has any words. They may not fully understand the concept and they're going to tell you, you know, they're grateful for mommy because that's the word they know, mm -hmm. but they are going to be able to tell you something. You know, a five-year-old is going to be grateful for the ice cream cone that they got at lunchtime, right? Those are okay if that's the thing that they know, but teaching them that practice so that it becomes a part of their regular life huge, huge for when they get older. Yeah, I, I think that is really an important thing. Um, you know, as you're saying that, Pete, I'm, I'm kind of at the, I'm bookending it with an activity that I, I believe I shared maybe with, with you, Aaron, um, 
So we did the Choose the Good video project this year with the freshmen again, where they had to kind of, through a one-minute video, like a social media type post, express um, you know, what they see as an opportunity to, to choose the good. And in, in in a, I guess there's a gratitude element to it, right? Um, but they struggled with that greatly, um, finding a positive uh, something. And I think this element of, of in, you know, allowing students to explore what they're, what, you know, what they're grateful for as, at a young age or a, you know, middle school age or a high school age is a good thing. So they can be prepared to be more open and, and able to see these things as they get older. Because I, I don't, and Letitia, you could probably speak to this more. It, it's like as you get older, it doesn't get easier um, if you're not practicing it. And it, it seems to be, it takes, doesn't it take, it takes even more to make that, that effort. Um, but if it becomes more of a life practice, a lifelong practice, um, people could probably be a lot better off. We all would, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I would say educational leaders too, try this with your staff. Um, this month I've been meeting with various stakeholders across the district and we've been opening up with that, saying how thankful we are for them. Community members, whether it was a parent group, um, with principals, if it was with students or teachers. And then we asked them to share what they're grateful for. And it, it's just a nice little space to kind of open up before a meeting or, or before you leave. Crystal, you're our book buddy. So do you have some books that you'd recommend? <laughs> Yay, oh my goodness. Get the list. Let me get my pen ready. This one was hard. I will tell you this one was hard because Books on gratitude are abundant, but books on gratitude that actually give you skills for gratitude versus just be grateful for everything in your life <laughs> is difficult, right? And just telling someone, especially someone who's going through a difficult time, like be grateful. It could be worse. Not only are you negating what they're going through, but you're basically telling them they're not allowed to have the feelings that they're having. And so I wanted books that actually give people practices and have some logic and science behind them. So the first book is Living Life as a Thank You, and it's by Mary Beth Sammons. And I can send you guys links to all of these if you want. And the reason I picked this book is because she talks in this book about having a gratitude toolkit. And what she means by that is creating things for yourself that on those really hard days you can look at, you can go to, to remind yourself that it's not all bad. And one of the things she talks about is this sort of dream board. She calls it a gratitude dream board. And I don't know about you guys, but I love vision boards for things that I want to come true in the future. So hers is a gratitude version of that for things that are yet to come in your life. I'm grateful that I'm going to have grandkids. I'm grateful that I'm going on a vacation next year. I'm grateful for, you know, the sun rising tomorrow because it hasn't risen in three days, whatever it happens to be. I thought this was genius when I read this book, because a lot of times when we create vision boards, especially we create them with the hopes and dreams that we have, not with the things that we know are coming in the future that we're grateful for, but maybe it's 12 months down the road. So we really don't think about it that often. I don't know about you guys, because some of you went to Florida this past weekend and I was not there, but I can tell you my, my actual official booked trip for Florida isn't till December of next year. And I'm already grateful for that. It's a whole year from now, but I'm already grateful for that. So I loved the idea in this book. And of course she talks about a whole bunch of other things that are really tangible for people to do. Fantastic book. The next one is called Thanks, How Practicing Gratitude Can Make You Happier. And this is by Dr. Robert Emmons. And I love him because he studies gratitude. He is one of the researchers that is my go-to for gratitude whenever studies are coming out. He talks in this book about how gratitude not only changes our mindset, but how gratitude can change our physiology because he does that research. So how heart rates can be improved by gratitude, how stress is reduced, how your body changes based on those things, how you can build neural connections through gratitude that maybe you didn't have before. He has a practical guide and some really good step-by-step -step things. If people have never practiced gratitude before, simple starting places. I'm grateful for this cup of coffee that I get to make myself or that I get to buy at Starbucks. 
simple things. Love his book. Love all of his work. He has like 10 other books as well. Like FYI, if you're somebody who wants to learn about gratitude, he's my go-to guy. The next book, which I think I may have mentioned on a previous podcast is called The Little Book of, and I'm going to pronounce this wrong, but I believe it's Hoga. It's by the Happiness Research Institute. And um, it I swear for some reason is just stuck in my brain every time I think gratitude because this book is about a way of life, being grateful for not just where you are in the moment, but where you can be, the life that you choose to create, the spaces that you cultivate, creating cozy moments, those sorts of things. So those would be my top three if I had to pick three, which you kind of asked me to do. (laughs) <laughs> That's amazing. I'm so excited. I wrote those down. Um, so here's a question we started doing this season. So I don't think we've done it with you yet, Crystal. And that is, is there a teacher, a coach or a mentor or someone growing up that inspired you or that you want to give a little shout out to? We, we like to kind of open the space and hear um, who was a, who's a good influence on you. So you you forewarned me this question was coming. And I have to tell you, Erin, I had a really hard time picking just one. And here's the reason. I'm someone who grew up in an environment where we moved two to three times a year. So I went to two or three different schools every single school year, which for me meant I really wasn't making friends the way most people make friends, especially in grade school, because we moved so often. But what I was doing was connecting with my instructors, my teachers, my professors. And so that carried forward for most of my life, even into university. So I can tell you in what we call middle school, which is grade six, seven, and eight here, I had a teacher and she was actually, she wasn't a specific teacher, like a gym teacher or a science teacher. Her name was Mrs. Daw and she did pretty much everything. She taught us gym. She taught us sex ed. She occasionally subbed in the science class, like She was just the be all end all. And the reason that I connected with her is because she was one of the very first people, teacher or not, to treat me like a real human being. I was a young girl. We moved around a lot. She took the time to listen to me. She took the time to invest in me when I needed someone to see me. And I will forever be grateful for her because she changed my life so much so that when I graduated and was no longer going to be at the school she was at, I wrote her a really detailed letter about how she had changed my life. Mm. Mind blowing how amazing this woman was. And I have since tried to find her on social media and I cannot. So I don't know if she's just one of those people that is not on social media, but if anybody knows her, she was (laughs) at central senior public school, shout out Southern Ontario. Um, (laughs) She was amazing, but she's not the only one. You know, when I was in college and I was studying addictions work, I had a professor named Stephanie and she insisted we call her Stephanie, who literally was able to look at me one day and know that I was going through a mental health crisis and that I needed instant help. Like not just, I needed someone to talk to I instantly needed medical intervention. People like that are just like, I can't even put into words how much that woman changed my life because she, she noticed something no one else, no one else had noticed at the time. When I got to university, Dr. Book was my criminal psychology professor. And in university, it can be hard to connect with professors, depending on the kind of teacher or instructor they are. Fred knows this because of the space that he's in. She took the time to actually listen to what I had wanted in my career. And then she took the time to sit down with me and say, that's not going to happen. And here's the reason why it has nothing to do with you personally. It's not about your skill. It's not about how you're going to be able to, you know, function in the world. It's about the law here in the place that you live and the law will never let you do what you want to do. She burst my bubble, changed my whole life because I took a totally different path after that but she took the time and invested in that conversation. So there have been a lot of teachers and I could probably think of, you know, half a dozen more at least. Teachers are this wonderful gateway for young people because you're an adult who sees us, but doesn't treat us as children. You see us as people, as individuals. And if you're a teacher and you're struggling right now, to see whether or not you're making a difference, I guarantee you, you are. 
there is one student, whether they're your specific student or maybe a student of someone else, there is one student who you've connected with in your life. You have literally changed their life and they are alive today because of you. And that is what matters. That's beautifully said. Beautifully said. Oh, I'm so glad I asked you that question. Okay, guys, TPR, now it's time for us to give maybe one takeaway. I don't know about you guys, but I have a few, but one big takeaway or some kind of spark or something you're inspired by our very own Crystal Steers. Hmm, who should go first? I love that you always ask that. Although I will say a couple of weeks ago, you did surprise me because I was listening and you did not go with Fred first. And I was like, wait a minute, did I hear that right? And I'm rewinding on the podcast to be sure. Yep. I got to keep on my toes. That was a car. I was like, I was like, I was all geared up for it too. I'm like, right. That's why I did it. Okay. Fredo, tell us yours. You know what? It's, it, this is, it, it's, it's one that's really just, there was a lot, Chris said so much that was great tonight. And that's why we love having you here. Thank you. So I'm hoping that everybody listening to this, their wheels are turning and they're thinking in a, in a, in a grateful mode there, but most importantly, it was right at the beginning. Um, trust your ability. There was, um, that's like, there's so many different layers to that. And you, and you spoke about trusting your ability, I think in a way that tends to be uh, how we view our, our own inabilities. Like, so we don't trust ourselves. We don't think we can follow through on something. And when reality is we're, we're ready for it, we're prepared for it. Now we just got to execute on it. Um, and, and that needs to be reminded of teachers and, and probably students too, uh, the older students, especially that you can do these things. You can, you know, get through these challenges. You don't have to flail open or lay on your back like a turtle, you know, just <laughs> waiting for someone to kind of put you upright again. Um, learn to trust yourself. And, and maybe in a way, that's what you should be grateful for is that you've been given an, a gift and that it's your, op, you know, your obligation to exercise that gift. Is that the right word? Um, apply that gift. I think that's the better way to, to put it. But I like that. Trust your ability. Great. Letitia? <sighs> all the notes, all the notes. <laughs> You know, but I think overall for me, what I loved most that you gave us tonight was permission. Permission was woven through everything, right? It, it's about what works for you. Make all the plans you want, but be okay with things falling apart. And, you know, for teachers, that's so hard for us. It's so hard because the expectations that are put on us to be perfect, to know everything, to be able to do everything, there's just so much pressure. And so my big takeaway tonight is just that you gave us permission that it's okay to practice gratitude the way you feel (laughs) works for you. So thank you tonight for giving all of us permission to just be, to just be. So that's my big takeaway, permission. Nice. And to uh, watch squirrels. Right. (laughs) That's still a good one. That's That's a good one. Okay, Pete, how about you? Crystal, are you familiar with a musical called Come From Away? (laughs) Yes, very familiar. That's actually not too far from where I am now. That's where I was going. Okay, (laughs) that's what I wanted to know. So what a beautiful part of the world and even more beautiful people live in this location of Nova Scotia, correct? Right? So actually what you're We're talking here. about, um, it actually, so Newfoundland, East coast Newfoundland, here, Newfoundland, right, right. exactly. The East coast here is kind of islandy. Okay. So Nova Scotia is one part, technically not an island, but only attached to land by a very small portion. You then cross the ocean to Newfoundland and Labrador. Well, you, you've made that area even better by being there. And <laughs> you just have a way with words that just make me glow inside. So I'm so, I'm so grateful that you're our friend and you yes. come out with us. Um, I loved, uh, by the way, if, if you guys don't know, come from away, all listeners and all, you, it's a beautiful heartfelt, so well-written musical uh, about some really, really sad stuff, but they do it in such a beautiful way and it really uplifts you. So check out come from away. It's a really great show. It's on um, like Prime or Apple or something. Not, they filmed it. Is it available now? Yep. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Out. <laughs> um so uh what i wrote down something hit me early it was your definition of home 
I've mm. never heard it said like this, but mm -hmm. home is the feeling I create with my chosen family. Yes. Um, so important with Thanksgiving around the corner. Be very, very beautiful. So that that's my that will be on my plaque tonight. That's that's I love that one. So thank yeah, you. I love that that's what you chose, especially because you guys. So we in Canada have already done Thanksgiving. Ours happens in October. But because you guys are facing Thanksgiving, one of the things that happens around the holidays is people who don't have anyone start to feel more isolated and alone. Mm -hmm. And the holidays isn't necessarily about your biological family. Right. It's about the people you choose to spend your life with. Right. Those are the people that you want to be spending time with, that you want to be grateful for, that you want to celebrate. That's the whole purpose. So I love that you picked that. Sorry, go ahead, Aaron. No, that's oh, great. I'm just sitting here thinking about uh, when the border, because I've always wanted to go there, Crystal. So when the borders are back and open, I think we need to get the TPR bus uh, together. TPR van, school bus. Deal. Yeah, we got it. We got to drive it up and, and come visit you. I wrote down something I think similar to what Fred was talking about. You said, and I quote, we like easy and forget we can do hard things. Mm. Uh, that's, yeah, nice. That was great. I, I, you know, I don't know about you guys, and maybe this is a weird correlation or maybe it's not a good one, but you know, driving home on Monday from Orlando up here, there were some angry people on the road. Pete, did you notice some angry people? Oh, we talked about it. Yeah. All and, over. Yeah. And I have to say, um, you know, I think people, I think part of it is because everyone does want things so easy. And it, it, it mostly happened when we were stuck in bad traffic. And yes, that's frustrating. And yes, I want it to be easy to just get home and not have to deal with other cars. But sometimes that's just where you are. And it's a matter of what you take in that moment. Are you going to use that moment to be bitter and angry and frustrated and um, put out that negative energy? Or are you going to take that time and say, okay, well, I'm stuck here. What can I do with it? Listen to a great podcast. Put the music on. I rolled the window down. It was beautiful outside and chose, chose to enjoy it. I know that's a strange correlation, but I just think especially as we're getting ready for the holidays, we all just expect things to be easy, easy to get into a restaurant, easy to go shopping, get the things that you need, but, you know, take a deep breath. Sometimes things aren't that easy. Sometimes life isn't easy, but you can, you can get through. It. And I really appreciated that message today, Crystal. Oh, well, listen, I, I have all kinds of takeaways from tonight. Uh, one of which is I still have five sticky notes of things we didn't talk about. So I guess <laughs> at some point I'll have to come back to TPR. We'll bring you um, back. <laughs> Done. But honestly, you know, for me, especially because the last, I'm going to say four weeks, really, it hasn't quite been four weeks, but I'm going to say four weeks has been so stressful. I am just so unbelievably grateful. I am grateful for the people in my life. I am grateful for my ability to make big changes and choices. Not everyone has that freedom. I am eternally grateful to have magical people in my life like you guys. I am just, I am so in love with what you guys do. I had to catch up on a few episodes today because I was behind and so I got to listen to the last few episodes that you guys have done and the lessons that you're putting out in the world, not just for teachers, but for people who just have other people in their lives that they can take away from these things. Amazing. I'm just, I'm unbelievably grateful for all of you. Well, thanks, Crystal. That means a lot to us. Where can people find you if they want to connect with you in Chasing Happiness? So people can find me on chasinghappiness.ca, which is my wonderful website that Mr. Fred has helped me with, <laughs> which is still going to go, you know, through some changes and some evolution, just like I am in my life. And if people want to check me out on Instagram, it's chasinghappiness.ca, like physically the period CA um, and info at chasinghappiness.ca is my email. And of course, you know, I'm constantly posting on TPR so they can just follow me from there too. <laughs> That's amazing. And I don't know if you want to share this or not, but you've been doing some amazing things on Clubhouse. Is there? I have been. So Clubhouse has been this amazing experience for me. And I'm going to grab my cord because my computer says it's going to die. Oh, goodness. Um, hang on one sec. 
clubhouse has been a wonderful you guys just got to see my booty shorts didn't you i didn't even think about that when i stood up um see zoom something to be grateful for make sure to check our youtube uh, version of this if you're (laughs) i totally didn't even process i literally just thought oh my god my computer is gonna die yep booty shorts on national television crystal happiness booty that's right and it's another thing we're grateful for right for your booty (laughs) i love it okay I'm going to not freak out about that. And I'm just going to be grateful that I had a cord and could plug in and didn't get disconnected. Yes. Um, Clubhouse has been an amazing experience because I've been able to connect with people from around the world. And you guys know, because we've talked about this before, lockdowns in Canada got pretty severe for a little while. So everybody was really feeling isolated and anything you can do to feel less isolated than alone is a bonus. And Clubhouse was that for me. So I'm regularly on there. I'm also, there's a bunch of new stuff coming out that I'm testing and trying. There's a new app called Wisdom. And I'm just, you know what? I am going with the flow these days. I am following my creative spirit and mindset. And I'm just allowing myself to be in the moment, which speaking of which I did tell Aaron, I have a surprise for you all. So I'll show it to you, I guess, after we stop recording maybe, or do you want to see it now? I, I, I think we want to see it now okay so So, i think so (laughs) for me one of the things that is changing this year is i really am embracing my creative side and sometimes that just means creating stuff because i feel like creating stuff and then sometimes it's creating stuff to share with other people so last night i felt like creating something for you all what so (gasps) i made you guys a little christmas one you're each going to get one in the mail that is amazing. They're hand painted on little tiny pieces of wood. So, all right. So wow. there's, do you know, there's more history to this because you had posted something on Instagram about voting, whether or not you should post that other one also, but was that the same size? It's the same size. Yep. So they're, they're all like, they're, they're not as big as they look on camera. They're just little tiny. They're about, I guess the size of a palm um, yeah. because there is a ton of construction going on out here. So wood is abundant. Um, <laughs> and I'm, I'm spending, you know, a couple hours a day just painting things right now and enjoying that process. And so last night I thought, I wonder if I can do their logo. Turns out it doesn't look so great, but I can do it. It looks wonderful. It looks it's so fantastic. good. That is so such custom. a sweet gift. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank it you. may take, you know, 10 weeks to actually get to you, depending on Canada Post and the U.S. Postal Service, but I promise it's on its way. Just give it to the squirrels. They'll bring it down to us. <laughs> yeah. Letitia will watch for them. <laughs> My binoculars. Yeah. They don't have to roll it downhill because you're up above us. So. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Crystal, thank you so, so much. It's beautiful. So thoughtful. I love it. And you're modeling what you what you're speaking about. Yeah. Hey, well, Pete. and that's the thing, right? Like, I think, especially as adults, we often think to ourselves, like, I'm not creative. I can't do that thing. You don't have to do that thing for anybody but yourself. Or if you want to do that thing and just randomly gift it to people, you can do that too. It doesn't have to be a career. It doesn't have to be something that makes you money unless you want it to be. Like, get creative, throw it out when you're done. If you want, whatever works for you. Like there are no rules, just do what makes you happy. And I like that you're using material that's just there anyway. So that's great. Mm -hmm. Repurpose. Hey, Pete, where can people find us? Oh, we have a great website also by Mr. Fred and that's (laughs) teacherpeprally.com. And we have a wonderful Facebook group where Crystal's very active on. Thank you, Crystal. And then we have our hotline. We're starting to get calls. 678-439-TPR1. Give us a call. Let us know what you're grateful for. Let us know what you're thankful for. Let us know your definition of home and what your takeaway from tonight is. We'd love to hear it. We're starting to get calls in, so keep it up. Yeah, we would love to hear from you. All right. Well, Crystal, we once again are so thankful for you. And we're going to have to have you come back because I know you've got a lot more resources to share and great wisdom. So thank you again. Thank you for having me. I love you guys. Love you. Love you.